Guys, guys. Studio Dean is clearly trying to fuck with me for some reason. Last season, I ended up watching Goddamn Super Lovers. And that, I really didn't expect to like, but I did. This season, I started watching this, thinking I could laugh at this one. I actually really enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm really surprised. It's a comedy for me, that's what I'm going to say. There's a little bit of romance in it, but so far, I just like the comedy. The romance is just cliche and weird. I really didn't like the first half of this episode. First half of this episode, we had our main heroine introduced. She acts so damn shoujo, it ain't even funny. And they've got the perfect say for that in Horie Yui, Miss Baki Monogatari. Oh, man. It was so eh. I really didn't feel for the romantic bits at all. I mean, this girl shows up, she's like, Oh God, I'm such a princess. I was raised by my parents who loved me so much. They bought me everything. They made sure that no one was ever angry at me. They paid people off, blah, 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 blah. Basically just giving that kind of intro to, you know, a reverse harem. Like, basically that's how it felt. That intro you always get in a reverse harem or a harem where the character explains their story. And then it's like, and here's the guys, here's the girls. So that I didn't like too much. And when they introduced Kanade, <laughs> I really felt weirded out by that. Because I had forgotten about the age difference in this anime. So I went into this watching it blind. And then I came to this dude. He looked alright. He looks about 18 years old. Played by Sakurai Takahiro. So he's got a relatively deep voice. It's a mature voice. And then you find out he's an elementary schooler. <laughs> he's fucking 10 years old. <laughs> and he puts on his elementary school bag... With all his little items, his little recorder, his little froggy bag that's tied around. Oh my god, it's so funny. <laughs> it's so off. And that's where all the comedy comes from. That's when I started enjoying this show. Because there are moments that make it feel like a proper romance, but those just went all out the window after that point. Then they introduced his two friends. and <laughs> They're the best thing ever. I mean, one of them is played by <laughs> Morikubo Shotaro, which is another big seiyuu in this kind of anime. But then the third one, Dude with Glasses, is the best one ever. He's played by Gintoki from Gintama, Sugita Tomikazu. I freaked the fuck out. Because this kid is supposed to be 10, and these three kids are all supposed to be 10, look about 18. But then you've got <laughs> Sugita Tomikazu's voice coming in. Which is like the deepest Japanese voice I've ever heard. One of those manly voices I've ever heard. And he's running around shouting, Chinko! Chinko! And like putting his hand down his pants and then trying to touch people with it. I laughed my ass off. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that whole second half of the episode had me cracking up. Because you've got Kaho, who's trying to keep up with these three elementary schoolers. You've got Kanade, who's straight up agreed to be her boyfriend, but then is acting like an elementary schooler. She's feeling dirty about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of them are just having a laugh. The elementary schooler's is like, wow, you're pretty. And then they're just like playing in a playground, climbing around. It showed those three in the middle of the rest of the elementary school. <laughs> that was the best. You've got this nice line of kids that are all barely up to their hips. And they're the ones being the most childish and doing like a thousand years of pain to each other. <laughs> so I may continue watching this one. I'm not going to lie. I had a ton of fun. The voice cast in this one is amazing. The animation was great. There was one thing I really hated. I mean, I really, throughout the first half of this episode, I was so ready to drop it. One of the things I really don't like that they keep doing, they keep showing Kaho's silhouette. And it will change between all these violet and lime and ultraviolet colours. And it's really not a very good effect. I don't know why they've done it like three times in this episode. But other than that, the animation is crisp. When they show them in chibi forms, again, it's not as cute as some other anime. Like Real Life just did the chibis really well. This anime didn't do it quite so well. But my god. Second half of this episode blew my mind. I laughed my ass off. I will be coming back for episode two. And I have to give a major shout out to that soundtrack too. I mean, the music in general. The ending was incredible. 10 out of 10. It starts off with a character called Renren, Ren, apparently singing it, voiced by Shota Aoi. 
And I'm not sure if it's shown to Aoi again, but suddenly you get a serious voice going and it's incredible sounding. But just the soundtrack in general is really good as well. Studio Dean really are good recently. They've been on fire with everything they've made. I'm excited. As long as it stays away from the romance, this will be fan-fucking-tastic. If it tries to focus on the romance and doesn't get enough comedy in, it will be terrible. I don't know. I may try to convince Sun Wukong to do this for a drunk live reaction. We'll see. This one blew my mind, honestly. Surprise of the season so far for me, because I expected to hate this one, and I really, really loved the comedy in it. So we'll see what it actually does in the future. Definitely watch an episode two. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh man, and if you like this review, wreck that like button like you mean it. Subscribe if you haven't already to see more summer season reviews from me, and I will see you guys next time.